Bush backing former President Trump, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell is issuing his support after his critique of the former president over January's Capitol riots. Listen to this. If the president was the party's nominee, would you support him? Uh, the nominee of the party? Absolutely. Joining me right now is former Trump 2020 campaign senior advisor Jason Miller. Jason, it is great to see you again. Thanks very much for being here. Do you think President Trump may be the nominee next time around? Well, I certainly hope so. There hasn't been any decision made yet, but my bias is pretty clear here. And I got to tell you, Maria, buckle up for Sunday. President Trump is back and better than ever. If you believe in the America First movement and what he's been trying to do over the last four years, I think you're going to like it. But if you're part of the swamp or big tech or big media or Joe Biden's radical left wing mob, you're being put on notice. Well, look, I mean, this is the president's first major speaking uh, event at the CPAC conference this Sunday uh, since leaving office. So I know that there's going to be a high interest in seeing what he's going to discuss. Tell me about the contents of, of the talk as you know it. Is he going to talk about what he was able to accomplish? Because he certainly had uh, fantastic policy successes. Is he going to comment on the Biden agenda? or election 2020? What is it? So, great question. On Tuesday of this week, the president sat down with his speechwriting team and dictated out to them where he wanted to go. And it's really about the future. Uh, it's about what, how we grow the Republican Party, how we take these successes, how we win back the House and the Senate in 2022. But there's also some very strong policy critiques of Joe Biden in this disastrous first month. Everything from school reopenings, uh, which is a major, major concern all around the country. Even the New York Times had to taking issue with Joe Biden yesterday, a very thorough deconstruction of Joe Biden's immigration policies, amnesty, stopping wall construction, and Maria, one that I know that's near and dear to your heart, capitulating to China and how Joe Biden is putting in reverse a lot of these policies that President Trump started over these past four years. Yeah, I mean, look, the China story is very concerning, as you know, and, and I think this is such a concerning moment in time. Look at the journal this morning. There's a story on China's campaign to crush democracy in Hong Kong is working. And then there's an op-ed that sends the censorship party and about how the media is censoring so much, the media really letting us down, uh, feeling a lot like communist China when it comes to censorship. Is the president going to focus on the media at all as well? Yeah, and I referenced at the top about big tech and big media in addition to Joe Biden's radical left-wing mob here, but there are some very specific criticisms about big media, what we're seeing with the censorship of free speech, the way that we see the crackdown on conservatives or anyone who doesn't conform to this, uh, this woke mob mentality that's out there. And the way that Joe Biden has come in in this first month, and they're putting identity politics ahead of American identity. And I think that's someone that anyone watching, whether you're Republican or Democrat or you care about politics, the fact they're trying to institute their own values on everyone else's values and say whatever you believe doesn't work anymore is going to be concerning and the president is going to take issue with that on Sunday. The president, President Trump, tried to do a stimulus deal on the way out uh, at the end of last year. Now we've got the Senate's chief parliamentarian ruling that the controversial $15 federal minimum wage should not be included in President Biden's COVID-19 relief bill. This move viewed as a major hit to the Democrat-backed plan. But, Jason, you just heard my interview with Congressman Lance Gooden. It's actually 9 percent of this $1.9 trillion that is COVID-related. I don't know how Congress gets away with this. $1.9 trillion is going to mean a total of $5.3 trillion in money thrown at this economy in a year. And only 9% of this has to do with COVID. You've got $300 million in the arts and humanities endowments, $200 million for museums and libraries. Uh, you, you've got a Silicon Valley transit expansion, another $100 million in family planning funding. How is it possible that Nancy Pelosi gets all this stuff rammed through a bill that she's calling COVID relief? 
Because the only thing they care about is growing government and taking care of all the other swamp monsters that are inside the Beltway. You know, one of the things in there, Maria, that you so smartly pointed out is the fact that what this is supposed to be going for, which is COVID relief, making sure that we get the vaccine distributed, making sure that we're helping people with this bridge until we have the economy back up at 100 percent. That's such a minor portion. There's so much waste and so many things put in here. You know, on Sunday, President Trump will go and talk a bit about the efforts that the administration had and the successes, I would say, with vaccine distribution, the fact that we we're up to a million doses a day that were being distributed uh, when President Trump left office. And as we saw Admiral Girard mention yesterday, he's absolutely fed up with the Biden administration saying that they had nothing when they came in because President Trump had us on the path to success with Operation Warp Speed. So so you're going to, again, like I said, if you're a member of big tech or big media or the swamp monsters like Nancy Pelosi, uh, you might not want to tune in on Sunday. Everybody else, make sure to turn on the TV. Well, I mean, you make such an important point. Because Kamala Harris, the vice president, said in an interview, we had to start from scratch, Jason. I mean, how striking to hear that comment, knowing that President Trump led Operation Warp Speed, enabling these pharmaceutical companies to race through uh, the, the bureaucracy of the FDA because he rolled back regulations to allow for a faster, you know, completion uh, and a faster move to the vaccine. Do you see President Trump as the head of the Republican Party? Because after what we've all seen, the impeachment trial, we saw the divisions within the GOP. You just heard from Mitch McConnell sitting there with Brett Baer last night. But look at Liz Cheney. Liz Cheney continues to say President Trump should not be in the party. And then you've got others who say absolutely he should be. So what's your take in terms of the unity in this party and how much of it believes President Trump is their leader. Well, the overwhelming majority believes that President Trump is the leader. Uh, we saw that with the way that the party has stuck with him so far, and we've seen it from the polling numbers showing that upwards of 70, 80 percent of the Republican Party wants President Trump to run again in 2024. And I think the only divide right now is between, uh, you know, a half dozen, maybe a dozen Beltway insiders and then the conservative grassroots around the rest of the country. The polling shows this is a very united party, and not just a united party, but a united conservative movement and a united America First movement. Because keep in mind, Maria, there were a lot of African-American, Latino-American, uh, blue-collar Democrats who supported President Trump in 2020 and even in 2016 that might not classify themselves as Republicans. They just show up and go to work every day and believe in the country and their families. It's important we keep this group together as we go into the midterms in 2024, and President Trump's the one who's going to be able to do it. All right, Jason, we'll, we will be looking forward to Sunday's uh, address. Thanks so much. Good to see you, Jason Miller.